Assessment of the respiratory rate is an essential clinical skill and is measured by counting the number of breaths taken across one whole minute, that is, for a full 60 seconds. If the value measured is lower than the reference range for age, then the patient has pradipnea. If it is above the reference range, then tachypnea. The parameters provided here are based on the APLS values and represent breathing rates between the 5th to the 95th percentile of babies and children while at rest. Now clinically, it is important to use local reference ranges which may show slight variations or have different age-based groupings, such as children aged 1 to 4 years and 5 to 12 years, as opposed to what is shown here. In regard to this lecture, these values are only displayed for learning purposes. Now generally speaking, the normal respiratory rate is faster in younger infants and slower in older children. According to the APLS, the respiratory rate in the first month of life is typically between 25 and 50 breaths per minute. Now in the newborn period, the upper limit of normal has been shown to be a little higher at about 60 breaths per minute. As well, it is important to note that the newborn breathing pattern can be irregular with periods of rapid breathing alternating with short pauses, a phenomenon known as periodic breathing. The respiratory rate gradually decreases to about 20 to 35 breaths per minute at 18 months of life, then to about 12 to 24 breaths per minute at 12 years of age. A long set of parameters can be difficult to recall, but max and min values are often provided on observation charts, along with visual cues such as green, yellow, or red shading, which can be helpful for those with less experience. Once measured, the respiratory rate has to be taken into clinical context. There are several explanations for either fast, slow, or otherwise irregular breathing. Normal breathing, in addition to occurring at an appropriate rate, is generally quiet with the patient being comfortable and not displaying any signs of respiratory distress, such as nasal flaring or the use of accessory muscles of respiration. Note should be made of the pattern of breathing and any signs of increased respiratory effort or distress. Naturally, a focused physical examination will provide additional information where needed. I hope you found this lecture to be helpful and worth your time. Please feel free and very welcome to leave a comment or suggestion below. And if you like this video, please hit subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this channel.